whether you are programmer tester hacker or if you are associated with any kind of computer operation then this video is for you we have heard about this in colleges that a lot of packets make a connection but in those packets status codes are playing the major response in getting response from the server so in this video we are going to talk about all the status codes that are there inside a packet so let's jump in so let's take a quick overview about what HTTP status code says. Now simply we say when we open any website on web browser, there we get some response from the server side. We also call it as a web server. Now HTTP header request is actually what we send from our web browser which acts as a client and the HTTP response we get from the server as per the request. Now here if we need to understand that the HTTP response header has been successfully completed or not, this information we will get by the HTTP status codes. So now let's talk about all the status uh, codes that are existing over there. So you can see that you must have gone through a lot of different status codes like 404 or not found, 502, server timeout or 302 or redirection and many others. The first one that I want to take about is 1x series. Now x here refers to any number. For example, all the status codes related to one are the informational responses. You have 100 requests first of all that is referred for continue. This 100 continue response indicates that the client should continue the request or ignore the response if the request is already finished. Next up we have 101 switching protocols. Now this code is sent in response to an upgrade request header from the client and indicates the protocol that the server is switching to. 102 processing web dev. Now this code indicates that the server has received and is processing the request but no response is available yet. Next up we have 103 that is for the early hands. Now this status code is primarily intended to be used with a link header. Letting the user agent start preloading resources while the server prepares the response. Next up we have successful responses that is 200 OK as the primitive one. The request succeeded, the result meaning of like success depends on the HTTP method. For example, you have get method. The resource has been fetched and transmitted in the message body. Next up we have head request. Now the representation of headers are included in the response without any message body. You have put and post request as well. The resource describing the result of the action is transmitted in the message body. Next up we have trace request. The message body contains the request message as received by the server. Next up we have coming up is 201 created. Now the request succeeded and the new resource was created as a result. This is typically the response sent after the post request or some put request. Next up we have 202 accepted uh, status code. Now the request has been received but not yet acted upon. It is non-committal since there is no way in HTTP to later to send an asynchronous re response indicating the outcome of the request. It is intended for the cases where another process or server handle the request or for batch processing. Next up we have 203 non-authoritative information. This response code means the return metadata is not exactly the same as it is available from the origin server, but is collected from a local or a third party copy. This is mostly used for mirrors or backup of another resources. Except for that specific case, the 200 OK response is preferred to this status code. Now 204 is also there that is referred for no content. There is no content to send to this request, but the header may be useful. The user agent may update its cache headers for this resource with the new ones. 205 reset content. It tells the user agent to reset the document which is sent to the request. Next up we have 206 partial content. This response code is used when the range header is sent from the client to request only part of a resource. Next up we have 207 multi-status web dev. This conveys the information about multiple resources. For example, uh, if you are in a situation where multiple status codes might be appropriated. 226 IM used HTTP delta encoding. The server has fulfilled a get request for the resource and the response is a representation of the result of one or more instance manipulations applied to the current instance. 
And then we have redirection messages that is starting from the 3xx request. Now 300 multiple choices request is a kind of a status code that is used to the request that has more than one possible response. The user agent or user should choose one of them. There is no standardized way of choosing one of the responses, but HTML links to the possibilities are recommended so the user can pick. Now, next up you have uh, one of the most famous one that is 301 moved permanently. The URL of the requested resource has been changed permanently. The new URL is given in that response, which is why you get that. Now, next up we have 302 found. The response code means that the URL of requested resource has been changed temporarily. Further, the changes in the URL might be made in the future. Therefore, the same URL should be used by the client in future requests. Next up, we have 303C other. The server sent this response to direct the client in uh, to get the requested resource to another URL with a GET request. Next up, we have 304 not modified request. And now in this status code, this is used for uh, caching purposes. It tells the client that the response has not been modified. So the client can continue to use the same cache version in the response. Next up, we have 305 use proxy depreciated. Now, defined in a previous version of the HTTP specifications to indicate that a request response must be accessed by a proxy. It has been depreciated due to the security concerns for sure, but regarding in bad configurations of a proxy could be a reason. Next up is 306 unused. Now, this response code is no longer used. It is just reserved. It was used in a previous version of HTTP 1.1 specifications. Next up we have coming up is 307 temporary redirect. Now the server sends this response to direct the client to get the requested resource at another URL with the same method that was used in the prior request. This has the same semantics as the 302 found HTTP response code with the exception that the user agent must not change the HTTP method used. If a post was used in the first request, a post must be used in the second request as well. Next up, we have coming up 308 permanent redirect request. This means that the resource is now permanently located at another URL specified by the location. For example, you have HTTP response header. Now this has the same semantics as the 301 permanently uh, removed or you can say moved HTTP response code. So with the exception uh, that the user agent must not change the HTTP method used. If a post was used in the first request, a post must be used in the second request as well. And next up we have coming up the client side requests that are related to 4xx. Now, first up we have for that is 400 bad request. Now, this is for the server that cannot or will not process the request due to something that is perceived to be a client error. Example, a malformed request syntax, invalid request message framing or deceptive request routing. Usually ethical hackers who are find, finding bugs for bug bounty face these kind of errors quite a lot. 401 is the next coming up that is for the unauthorized status code. Now, although the HTTP standard specifies unauthorized uh, means unauthenticated, that is the client must authenticate itself to get the request response. Next up, we have important one that is 402 payment required. Now, this is experimental. Uh, you know, this response code is reserved for the future use. The initial aim for creating this code was using it for digital payment system. However, this status code is used very rarely and no standard convention exists. Next up, we have 403 forbidden. The client does not have the access rights to the content, that is, it is unauthorized. So the server is refusing to give request resource. Unlike 401 unauthorized, the client's identity is known to the server. Next up coming up, we have 404 not found. The server cannot find the requested resource. In this, the browser, this means, uh, you know, the URL is not recognized. In an API, this can also mean that the endpoint is valid, but the resource itself does not exist. Now, the server may also send this response instead of 403 forbidden to hide the existence of a resource from unauthorized client. 
This response code is probably the most well known due to its frequent occurrence on the web. Next up coming up, we have 405 method not allowed. Now the request method is known by the server, but it is not supported by the target resource. For example, an API may not allow calling delete to remove resource. And next up, I still remember that is, uh, you know, hackers have been finding this quite a lot. That is 406 again. Uh, that is for not acceptable. Now the response is sent when the web server, uh, you know, after performing the server driven uh, content negotiation, you can say, and it doesn't find any content that confirms the criteria given by the user agent. Next up, we have 407 proxy authentication required. This is similar to 401 unauthorized, but the authentication is needed to be done by a proxy. Now, next up we have 408 request timeout. Now this response is sent on an idle connection by some servers, even without any previous request by the client. It means that the server would like to shut down the unused connections. This response is used much more since some browser like Chrome, Firefox 27 plus editions or IE9 or, and you know, there are a lot of browsers who have been using the HTTP pre-connection mechanism in order to speed up the surfing. Also note that some servers merely shut down the connection without sending this message. Next up coming up, we have 412 precondition failed. Now the client has indicated the preconditions in its headers, which the server do need to meet in order to complete this request. Next up coming up, we have 413 payload too large. Now this request entity is larger than the limits defined by server. The server might close the connection or return and retry after header field. Next up we have 414 URL too long. The URL requested by the client is longer than the server is willing to interpret. Next up coming up, we have 415 unsupported media type. The media format of this request data is not supported by the server. So the server is rejecting the request. Next up coming up, we have 416 range not satisfied. The range specified by the range header field in the request cannot be fulfilled. It's possible that the range is outside the size of the target URLs uh, data, you can say. Next up, we have 417 expectations failed. Now this response code means the expectations indicated by the expect request header field cannot uh, be met by the server. Next up coming up, we have 421, that is misdirected request. The request was directed as a server that is not able to produce a response. This can be sent by a server that is not configured uh, to produce some responses for the combination of scheme and authority that are included in the request URL. Next up coming up, we have 429, too many requests. Now the user has sent too many requests in a given amount of time that is, that can be stopped with the help of rate limiting. Next up coming up, we have 431, that is request header fields too large. Now the server is unwilling to process the request because its header fields are too large. Now the request may be resubmitted after reducing the size of the request header fields. Next up coming up, we have 451, unavailable for legal reasons. Now the user agent requested a resource that cannot legally be provided such as a web page censored by a government. Now next up coming up we have is server related response that are the last ones. Now this follows the series of 5x, 5xx status codes. The first one in this list is 500 internal server error. The server has encountered a situation it does not know how to handle which is why you get the status code. Next up coming up, we have 501 not implemented. The request method is not supported by server and cannot be handled. The only method that servers are required to support and therefore that must not be, uh, that must not return this code are get and head. Next up coming up, we have 502 bad gateway. Now this error response means that the server while working as a gateway to get a response needed to handle the request but you know, it has got an invalid response. Next up coming up we have is 503 service unavailable. Now the server is not ready to handle the request. Common causes are a server that is down for maintenance or that it is overloaded. You can say you must know that together with this response, a user friendly page explaining the problem should be sent.
This response should be used for temporary conditions and retry after HTTP header, uh, you know, if possible contains the estimated time before the recovery of the service. The webmaster must also take care about uh, caching related headers that are sent along with this response as these temporary condition responses uh, should usually not be cached. Next up coming up we have is 504 gateway timeout. Now this error response is given when the server is acting as a gateway and cannot get a response in time. Next up coming up we have is 505 HTTP version not supported. Now, the HTTP version used in the request is not supported by the server, which is why you get this status code. Next up coming up is 506 variant also negotiates. The server has an internal configuration error. The chosen variant resource is configured to engage in transparent content negotiation itself. And it is not a proper endpoint in the negotiation process. Next up coming up we have is 507 insufficient storage. Now the method could not be performed on the resource because the server is unable to store the representation needed to successfully complete the request. Next up coming up we have is 502 loop detected. Now here the server detected an infinite loop while processing the request. Next up coming up is 510 not extended. Now here further extensions to the request are required for the server to fulfill it. Next up coming up we have as 511 network authentication request. It indicates the client needs to authenticate to gain network access. So now this was the whole encyclopedia you can say that I have defined in this video that are related to all the status codes that are existing related to computer which is why this was a special computer guy stuff that I'm delivering in this video because whether you are a programmer, ethical hacker, tester or if you are associated with any kind of field that is related to computer then this is the video that one should watch because this is the basic fundamental that every computer professional should know. Now this was a quick informative video. I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. But don't forget to subscribe and follow me on my Instagram that is Saksham the Computer Guy. Thank you so much for watching.